If you think about a neural circuit as an electrical circuit in your house, for example, where you have lots of different components wired together in order to serve different functions, a neural circuit is where different cells, nerve cells, are components of that circuit. They connect to one another uh, in order to generate particular functions. We use comparative analysis of lots of different animals in order to understand how a particular neuron, a particular nerve cell, or part of the brain might be used in different behaviors. The circuit that we focus on is the startle circuit. So the startle circuit is relatively simple compared to circuits that are happening in our forebrain and involve lots of different regions and lots of different cells. The startle circuit, in fact, has just a few cells in the hindbrain that sit at the core of that circuit. And if we can use that as our base, as our ground point for the circuit, then we can understand the inputs coming in and inputs going out. We study the startle circuit primarily in zebrafish, which is a great genetic system. There are a lot of molecular tools that we can use in the zebrafish to um, experiment with the startle neurons. We can see the neurons, the nerve cells in the brain firing, uh, and we can uh, record using more uh, finer tuned electrical approaches, record the firing while the animal is performing these behaviors. In zebrafish, we've been able to use tools to do things like move these cells around in the brain. So we can take neurons that are in a particular location in normal animals, put them somewhere else, and see what the brain does with that. And we found that in this startle circuit that we're looking at, um, if we move the primary neurons for that circuit to a different part of the hindbrain, that they'll still figure out how to connect to the appropriate upstream cells to get sensory information, and they have motor output to drive the behavior. The brain is really good at integrating these cells in a new place where it's never seen them before. The human brain, of course, is much larger and very complicated, and actually most zebrafish and other fish circuits are larger and more complicated than the ones that we study. But we we can use these simple model circuits across species in order to understand fundamental principles. So our hope is that by understanding how neurons and circuits drive movement in these simple contexts, that we can apply the principles we learn from that to much more complicated brains, such as the humans, or brain regions. For more information about the Brain Initiative, visit nsf.gov slash brain.